the Lux Radio Theatre. Tonight presenting Death of a Salesman. Welcome to the largest playhouse in the world for our Pulitzer Prize winning drama, Death of a Salesman. Critics voted Arthur Miller's searing drama their unanimous choice for its year. And the Lux Radio Theatre is proud to bring it to you now. Our stars are John Mellion and Frank Waters. It was Frank Waters' portrayal of the main character, Willie, on the Sydney stage that led to him being invited as a guest actor at the Shakespeare Memorial Theatre at Stratford on Avon. Our producer director is Mr. Paul Jackman. A fresh, radiant complexion opens up new vistas of loveliness. Make pure white Lux toilet soap your passport to beauty. Nine out of every ten film stars insist on Lux toilet soap for the finest, most beautifying complexion care. They know Lux is so mild, so gentle, with a snowy whiteness that's proof of a purity no other soap can match. Your skin deserves the finest, the mildest care too. So let the rich, creamy lather of Lux toilet soap bring new, radiant loveliness to your complexion. Soon your skin will glow with beauty, just like the film stars. That's the promise of Lux. Now, the Lux Radio Theatre presents Act One of Death of a Salesman. There is a home in Brooklyn. A small, fragile-seeming home surrounded on all sides by the towering, angular shapes of apartment houses. It is night now, late at night. And in one bedroom of this home are two young men, the sons. Neither one lives here any longer, but they're both here this night. They sleep, but not too soundly. And in another bedroom, a woman, the wife and the mother of this home, lies also in bed, but does not sleep at all. Perhaps she hears the front door open downstairs. Perhaps... Perhaps she hears the thud of two heavy cases set down heavily on the floor, but if she hears these sounds, she does not stir. Perhaps she tries to tell herself that she does not hear them at all, and those footsteps on the stairs, they are imagined footsteps. But then the bedroom door opens softly. Willie? All right, I came back. Why, what happened? Did something happen, Willie? No, nothing happened. You didn't smash the car, did you? I said nothing happened. Didn't you hear me? Don't you feel well? I'm tired to death. I couldn't make it. I just couldn't make it, Linda. I got as far as a little above Yonkers. I stopped for a cup of coffee. Maybe it was a coffee. What? I suddenly couldn't drive anymore. The car kept going off on the shoulder, you know? Oh, Maybe it's the staring again. I, I don't think Angelo knows much about the studio, baby. No, no, it's me, it's me. Suddenly I'm going 60 miles an hour and I don't remember driving the last five minutes. I'm, I can't seem to keep my mind to it. I, I'm telling you, I absolutely forgot I was driving. If I'd gone over the white line the other way, I might have killed somebody. So I, I went on again. And five minutes later, I'm dreaming again. And I nearly... I have such thoughts. I have such strange thoughts. Willie, dear, talk to them again. There's no reason why you can't work in New York. They don't need me in New York. I'm the New England man. I'm vital in New England. But you're 60 years old. They can't expect you to keep on traveling every week. Did Biff say anything after I went this morning? Oh, you, you shouldn't have criticized him, Willie. Especially after you just got off the train. You mustn't lose your temper with him. When did I lose my temper? I simply asked him if he was making any money now. Is that any criticism? But, dear, how could he make money? There's such an undercurrent in him. He became a moody man. Did he apologize when I left this morning? He was crestfallen, Willie. Yeah, crestfallen. You know how much he admires you. I think if he finds himself, then you'll both be happier and you, you won't fight anymore. How can he find himself on a farm? Is that a life for farmhand? In the beginning, when he was young, I thought, well, a young man, it's good for him to tramp around. But he's 34 years old now. I think he's still lost, Willie. I think he's very lost. Biff Lohman is lost. In the greatest country in the world, a young man with such personal attractiveness is lost. Willie, dear, I got a new kind of American-type cheese today. It's whipped. Why do you get American when I like Swiss? I thought you might like a cheese. I don't want a change. I want Swiss cheese. 
Why am I always being contradicted? I, I thought it would be a surprise. Why don't you open the window in here, for heaven's sake? <laughs> They're all open, dear. The way they boxed us in here, bricks and windows, windows and bricks. They should have had a law against apartment houses. Oh, Linda, you remember those two beautiful elm trees out there? Yeah. yeah. Like being a million miles from the city. Yeah. They should have arrested the builder for cutting those down. They should have... How can you whip cheese? Go and try it. And be quiet. Yeah. I won't fight him anymore. If he wants to go back to Texas, let him go. He'll find his way. Sure. Certain men just don't get started till later in life. Like uh, Thomas Edison, I think. I'll put my money on Biff. <laughs> hey, look. Oh, close your eyes, Linda. Sweet. Hey, Biff. I'll go. Biff. Biff. I'll, I'll be right. Hey, Biff, listen. Huh? Biff, I think Papa's back. Yeah, I know. I've been listening. Oh, my gosh. Maybe he smashed up the car again. He's going to get his license taken away if he keeps that up. I'm getting nervous about him, you know, Biff? <laughs> he stops at a green light, and then it turns red, and he goes. <laughs> Maybe he's colorblind. You're not still sour on Dad, are you, Biff? Why does he mock me all the time? He's not Every time I you... say there's a twist of mockery on his face. I can't get near him. I just want you to make good, that's all. I wanted to talk to you about Dad for a long time, Biff. Something's happening to him. He, he talks to himself. Yeah, I noticed that this morning. But he always mumbled. Yeah, but not so noticeable. Most of the time he's talking to you. What's he say about me? Well, I think the fact that you're not settled, that you're still kind of up in the well, air... One or two just... other things depressing him, Happy. Well, what do you mean? Never mind, just don't lay it all to me. But I, I think if you just got started I tell something... you, Happy, I don't know what the future is. I don't know what I'm supposed to want. What do you mean? Well, I spent six or seven years after high school trying to work myself up. Shipping, clerk, salesman, business of one kind or another. <laughs> yeah, it's a measly manner of existence. To devote your whole life to keeping stock or making phone calls, or selling or buying, to suffer 50 weeks of the year for the sake of a lousy two-week vacation. When all you really desire is to be outdoors with your shirt off. And always to have to get ahead of the next fella. And yet that's how you build a future. Well, you, you really enjoy it on a farm? Are you content out there in Texas playing with horses? Yeah, I am, but I... Hap, maybe I ought to get married. Maybe I ought to get stuck into something. Maybe that's my trouble. I'm, I'm like a boy. I'm, I'm not married. I'm, I'm not in business. I'm just... I'm... I'm like a boy. Are you content, Hap? You're a success, aren't you? Are you content? I'm not so you'd notice. Listen, why don't you come out west with me? You and I, huh? Sure, maybe we could buy a ranch, raise cattle, use our muscles. Ha <laughs> ha, half men built like we are should be working out in the open. The Loman brothers, eh? Sure. Hey, that's, that's what I dream about, Bill. Look, I'm telling you, kid, if you were with me, I'd be happy out there. The only thing is, what can you make out there? Yeah, what's the difference? There's the merchandise manager at my place, Biff. When he walks into the store, the waves part in front of him. That's $52,000 a year coming through the revolving door. And I got more in my pinky than he's got in his head. Yeah, but you just said that... Yeah, I gotta show some of these pompous, self-important executives over there that Hap Loman can make the grade. I wanna walk into that store the way he walks in. Then I'll go with you, Biff. So that's odd. I don't feel that way. No, I just got one idea I think I'm gonna try. What's that? You remember Bill Oliver? Sure, Oliver's very big now. You, you want to work for him again? No, I don't want to work for him. I think I'll go and see him. You know, if I could get 10000 or even seven or $8,000, I could buy a beautiful ranch. Hey, I bet he'd back you. Yeah, I just wonder, though. <laughs> I wonder if Oliver still thinks I stole that carton of basketballs. You remember that time, Hap? <laughs> yeah, I remember. Things were different then. Like when we were in college. <laughs> Don't be the hubcap, boy. Get the chamois to the hubcaps. Make that car shine. No, no, Hap. Use newspaper on the windows. No, 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 no. Show him how to do it, Biff. That's it, you see, Happy? Pad it up. Use it like a pad. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Good work. How's that, Pop? Professional? Terrific, terrific job, boys. All good work, Bill. Hey, did you see the new football I got? Uh, uh, where'd you get the new ball? Well, the coach told me to practice my pass. That's so? And he gave you the ball, hey? Well, I borrowed it from the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> Initiative. Biff, how about the game? This Saturday, Pop. This Saturday, yeah. just for you, I'm gonna break right through for touchdown. Hey, Biff, where are you? 
Faith, you're supposed to study yeah. with me. Hey, look at Bernard. What are you looking so anemic about, Bernard? <laughs> no, Biff's got to study, Uncle Willie. He's got a state exam next week. Listen, Biff, I heard Mr. Birnbaum say if you don't start studying math, he's, he's going to flunk you. You won't graduate. I heard it. What are you talking about? With scholarship to three universities, they're going to flunk him? Yeah, but I heard Mr. Birnbaum... Don't be obsessed, Bernard. Okay, I'm waiting for you in my house, Biff. <laughs> Bernard is not well-liked, is he? No, he's liked, but not well-liked. Yeah, that's right, Pop. That's just what I mean. Bernard can get the best marks in school, you understand, but in the business world, <laughs> the man who creates personal interest is the man who gets ahead. Be liked and you will never want. Now, you take me, for instance. <laughs> I never have to wait in line to see a buyer. Willie Lohman is here, that's all they have to know, and I go right through. Did you knock him dead, Pop? Knocked them cold in Providence. Slaughtered him in Boston. <laughs> I'm going in to see your mother. I'll see you, boys. Willie. Hello, dear. Sweetheart. How's the Chevy run? Chevrolet, Linda, is the greatest car ever built. Marvelous. Did you sell anything? I did 500 gross in Providence and 700 gross in Boston. 200? Willie, $212. Yeah, well, I, I didn't figure it yet, but, uh, uh, but... How much did you do? Well, I, I, I did about, uh, about 180 gross in Providence. Well, no, it, it came to roughly 200 gross on the, on the whole trip. Well, the trouble was that three of the stores were half closed for inventory in Boston. And otherwise, I would have broken record. I, I would have... Would have well, uh, it makes $70 and some pennies. That's very good. Yeah. What do we owe? Well, on the first, there's uh, $16 for the refrigerator. Yeah. There's nine sixty for the washing machine or the yeah. roof. Uh, you've got $21 remaining. But it don't leak, do it? Oh, no, no. They did a wonderful job. Then you owe Frank for the carburetor. I'm not going to pay that, man. That Chevrolet. They ought to prohibit the manufacturer of that car. Well, you owe him three and a half. And odds and ends comes round to $120 by the 15th. $120? Gee, if business doesn't pick up, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, dear, next week. Yeah, next week. Oh, I'm going to Hartford. I'm very well liked in Hartford. You know, the trouble is, Linda... People don't seem to take to me. Oh, don't be foolish. You're making 70 to to $100 a week. But I've got to be out of 10, 12 hours a day. Other men, I don't know. They, I'm, I'm not dressing to advantage, maybe. Huh? Willie, darling, you're the handsomest man in the world. Oh, no, Linda. To me, you are the handsomest. Oh, Linda. Oh, you're the best there is, Linda. You're a pal, you know that? On the road, on the road, I want to grab you sometimes and just kiss the life out of you. But, uh, I'll make it all up, you, Linda. I'll, There's well, nothing to make up, dear. You're doing fine. Hey, where is Biff, Uncle Willie? Look, if he doesn't... You'll give him the answers, Bernard. Hey, I do, but I can't on this one. This is a state exam. They're, they're liable to arrest me. Where is he, Linda? I'll whip him. I'll whip him. And he'd better give back that football, Willie. It's not nice. Biff! Now, where is he? Why is he taking everything? He's too rough with the girls, Willie. All the mothers are afraid of him. He's driving the car without a license. All the mothers... Shut up! Mr. Birnbaum says he's stuck up. Get out of here! Well, if he doesn't buckle down, he'll flunk math. He's right, Willie. He's right. There's nothing the matter with Biff. You want him to be a worm like Bernard? He's got spirit, personality. He's loaded with it. Loaded. What's he doing? He's giving it back, giving it back with me? Never in my life told him anything but decent things. Ah, Why is he still... Don't snap out of it, will you? Hey, uh, oh, happy. I, I, I was thinking, I guess, you know, I was remembering. Now, let's go now. Come on, Pop. Talking to yourself. Now, take it easy, will you? What brought you back tonight? I got an awful scare, Happy. I nearly hit a kid in Yonkers. Oh, God. Why didn't I go to Alaska with my brother Ben that time? Pop, I told you, I'm going to retire you for life. You'll retire me for life on your 70 lousy dollars a week and your women and your car and your apartment and you'll retire me for life? Wait a minute, Pop. The door. Wait here. Oh, Happy. Everything all right? Yeah, Charlie. He, he was... Go back to bed, kid. I'll take care of him. Uh, what's the matter? I heard some noise. I thought something happened. I'm going to bed. You coming, Dad? No, oh, I'm not tired at the moment. Willie and I'll talk. All right. But take it easy, huh, Pop? Yeah. yeah. What are you doing up? Couldn't sleep good? What are you doing home? A uh, little trouble with the car. Listen, Willie, you want a job? I got a job. I told you that. What do you offer me a job for? Don't get insulted. Well, don't insult me. Don't insult, see no sense in it. You don't have to get insulted all the time. I got a good job. What do you keep coming in here for? You want me to go? Charlie, I... I can't understand him. He's gone back to Texas again. Let him go. 
I've got nothing to give him, Charlie. I'm cleaned out. Right out. He won't starve. None of them starve. Forget about him. Forget? Then what have I got to remember? You take it too hard. To hell with it. When a deposit bottle is broken, you don't get your nickel back. Yeah, that's easy enough for you to say. That ain't easy for me to say. Yeah. Hey, did you see the ceiling I put up in the living room? Yeah, that's a piece of work. <laughs> to put up a ceiling is a mystery to me. How do you do it? <laughs> you gonna put up a ceiling? How could I put up a ceiling? Then what are you bothering me for? You're insulted again. A man who can't handle truth is not a man. You're disgusting. Don't call me disgusting, Willie. If I'm disgusting, I'll get out of here. Yeah. Oh, Charlie. Willie. Oh. Willie, dear. <laughs> Did you have some cheese? It's very late, darling. Mm -hmm. Come to bed, huh? Gotta break your neck to see a star from this window. Bricks and mortar. Apartment houses. You coming up? No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll take a walk. But you're in your slippers. I'll take a walk with you. You're in your slippers, Willie. Mom. Hmm? What's he doing out there, Mom? Oh, sure, she'll hear you, Biff. How long's he been doing this? A long time, Biff, I told you. What's the matter with him? It'll pass by morning. I never heard him so loud, Mom. Biff, when you come home, he's, he's always the worst. When I come home? When you write your coming, he's, he's all smiles and talks about the future, and he's just wonderful. And then the closer you seem to come, the more shaky he gets. And then the time you get here, he's arguing and he seems angry with you. Why are you so hateful to each other? Why is that? I'm not hateful, Mom. If you hate him, then you must hate me. Because he's the dearest man in the world to me. And I won't have anyone make him feel unwanted and low and blue. So pay him respect or don't come here at all. Make up your mind. Hey, hey there, Biffo boy. <laughs> Listen to him out there. Biffo boy. <laughs> What's the matter with him? Don't go near Stop him. Stop making excuses for him. He always, always wiped the floor with you. Never had an ounce of respect for you. He's always had respect. Well, you know about it. Well, just don't call him crazy. He's got no character. Charlie wouldn't do this, spewing out that vomit from his mind. Then make Charlie your father. You can't do that, can you, Biff? I don't say he's a great man. Willie Loman never made lots of money. His name was never in the papers. And he's not the finest character that ever lived. But he is a human being, and a terrible thing is happening to him. So attention must be paid. Attention, attention must finally be paid to such a person. You called him crazy. Mom, I didn't mean that he no, was... No, no, a lot of people think that he's lost his, his balance. But you don't have to be very smart to know what the trouble is. The man is exhausted. Oh, sure. A small man can get just as exhausted as a big man. He works for a company 36 years this March, opens up unheard of territories of their trademark, and now in his old age, they take his salary away. You... I didn't know that, Mom. I never asked. For five weeks, he's been on straight commission, like a beginner. An unknown. Those ungrateful bastards. Are they any worse than his own sons? And what goes through a man's mind driving 700 miles home without having earned a cent? Just because he's not young anymore. Why shouldn't he talk to himself? Why? When he has to go to Charlie and borrow $50 a week and pretend to me that it's his pay. No. And how long can that go on for? How long? You see what I'm sitting here and waiting for. And you tell me that he has no character. The man who never worked a day but for your benefit. He threw me out of this house, remember that. And why did he do that? I never knew why. Because I know he's a fake and he doesn't like anyone around who knows it. But why a fake? In what way? What do you mean? Just don't lay it all at my feet. It's between me and him. That's all I have to say. I'll tip in from now and he'll settle by half my paycheck. I'll be all right. I'm going to bed. He won't be all right. I hate this city and I'll stay here. Now what do you want? He's dying, Biff. Why is he dying? He's been trying to kill himself. How? I live from day to day. What are you I... talking about? Last month. Boys, it's so hard to say a thing like this. I was looking for a fuse. The lights blew out and I went down to the cellar. And behind the fuse box, it happened to fall out, was a length of rubber pipe. He put it there. No kidding. There was a little attachment on the end of it. I knew right away. And sure enough, on the bottom of the water heater, there was a new little nipple on the gas pipe. Suicide? He's thinking of suicide? I live from day to day, boy. I, I don't know what to do. What can I do? His life is in your hands, not mine. He's not to be allowed to fall into a grave like an old, an old dog. 
You're not to allow it. Now, what are you going to do? Worn three summers and still like new. What's the secret? Frequent washing with gentle Lux flakes. Nighties, filmy lingerie and figure moulding foundation garments, everything you wear next to your skin needs a daily dip in creamy Lux suds to stay fresh, bright and flattering. This is a statement by the makers of Glamorous Hestia. We strongly recommend that you use only Lux flakes for the care of our garments. Rinse your Hestia 88 bra in gentle Lux suds as frequently as possible. Tiny Lux diamonds dissolve quickly. They swirl into silky suds with a whisk of a hand, remove every trace of acid perspiration, preserve elasticity, and leave your garments wonderfully clean. By the big family size Lux, it holds one full pound of gossamer fine, faster dissolving Lux flakes. Switch to Lux. Lux is so safe. Your hands, as well as your lovely garments, will tell you so. We return for Act Two of the Lux Radio Theatre production, Death of a Salesman. He put rubber piping on the gas pipe. That jerk! He wouldn't do it, he wouldn't have the guts. He did and he would, unless attention is paid. Did you have it taken off? I... I'm ashamed to. Oh. How can I mention it to him? Every day I go down and take away that little rubber pipe. When he comes home, I put it back where it was. Well, how could I insult him in that way? I don't know what to do. I tell you, he put his whole life into you and you turned your backs on him. Biff... I swear to God, Biff, his life is in your hands. Mom. All right, pal, all right. It's all settled now. I've been remiss, I know that, Mom, but now I'll stay, and I swear to you, I'll apply myself. It's just, you see, Mom, that... Well, I... I just don't fit in business. Not that I won't try, I'll... I'll try, I'll make good. Well, sure you will. The trouble with you in business was you never tried to please people. Yeah, I know. Like I, when you I worked for Harrison's. Bob Harrison said you were tops, and then, then you're going to do some fool thing like whistling whole songs in the elevator like, like a comedian. Who whistles in elevators? Well, uh, we were just talking, Pop. You, Biff? You whistle in elevators? Go back to the West. Be a cowboy. Go on, enjoy yourself. Willie, dear, he's just a son. He's going to see Bill Oliver, Pop. Oliver? Oh, for what? Well, you know, you always said he'd stake me. I'd like to go into business, so maybe I can take him up on it. Isn't that wonderful? Don't interrupt. What's wonderful about it? There are 50 men in the city of New York who'd stake him. The sporting goods? Yeah, I guess so. I know something about it. He knows well, something can... about it. You know more about sporting goods better than Spalding. Now, how much has he given you? I don't know, Pop. I didn't even see him yet. Then what are you talking oh, about? Oh, for God's sake, I'm going. Don't you curse in this house. Since when did you get so clean? Hey, wait a minute, will you? I'll see Oliver tomorrow. He did like me, always liked me. He loved you. I'll try to get some myself, Biff. I'm sure I can. I see great things for you kids. I think your troubles are over. But remember, start big and you'll end big. Now, ask for 15. 10, I think it'd be tough. Don't be modest. Walk in with a big laugh. Start off with a couple of your good stories to lighten things up. Now, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, because personality always wins the day. Oliver always thought the highest Will stuff. you let me talk? Don't yell at her, Pop, will you? I was talking, wasn't I? Willie. Don't take his hat all the time. Stop yelling at her. Look. Give my best to Bill Oliver. He, he may remember me. What did you want to start that for? You can see how sweet he was as soon as you talked, hopefully. Come up and say goodnight to him. Well, don't let him go to bed that way. Willie! Willie! I'll go to him. I'll see he doesn't go to bed with spies in his own house. Come on, Willie. I wonder if Oliver will remember Biff. You think he might? Remember him, Oliver? What's the matter with you? Are you crazy? If he stayed with Oliver, he'd be on top by now. Wait till Oliver gets a look at him. You don't know the average caliber anymore. The average young man today has got a caliber of zero. Greatest thing in the world was for him to bum around. <laughs> Get into bed, dear. Yeah, okay. Get into bed. Yeah. Pop. Mm. Pop, I just wanted to say good night. Yeah. Knock him dead, boy. Just take it easy, Pop. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Now, don't undersell yourself, Biff. No less than $15,000. Yeah, okay. Good night, Mom. Good night. Yeah. Oh, Linda. Remember that Ebert's Field game? Championship of the city? Just rest, yeah. dear. Should I sing to you? 
Yeah, yeah, you sing to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when that team mm -hmm. came out, mm -hmm. Biff was the tallest, remember? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, and all in gold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, like a young god. Hercules, mm -hmm. something like that. And the sun, mm -hmm. the sun all around him. Remember how he waved to me? And the cheers when he came out. Loman, Loman, Loman. Oh, Linda, he'll be great yet. A star like that, magnificent, can never really fade away. Wooly dear, what has he got against you? Hmm? No, uh, I'm so tired. I don't talk anymore. Will you ask Howard to, to let you work in New York? Yeah, first thing in the morning. Everything's going to be all right. Happy. Happy wake up. It's true. I found the rubber tubing down the cellar just now. I took it away. But oh my God, it's true. Where's Biff? Gone to see Oliver. Oh, what a boy that Biff is. $15,000, as good as in his pocket. We could use a little money ourselves, dear. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, how much? All told, about $200 would carry us. But that includes the last payment on the mortgage. After this payment, Willie, the house belongs to us. Uh, I'll get it, Linda. I'm going to talk to Howard today. I'll put it to him straight and simple. He'll take me off the road. I know he will. I'm sure he will, dear. Sure. And don't forget, after you've seen Howard, you're to meet the boys for dinner. Oh, I'll be there at the usual place. <laughs> we'll have a wow of a time, me and my boys. Okay, goodbye, Lindy. <laughs> I, um, I, I'd like to have a little talk with you, Howard. Yeah, sure, sure. Two minutes. Say, aren't you supposed to be in Boston? Uh, that's what I was uh, talking about, Howard. Uh, you got a minute? You didn't crack up again, did you? Oh, no, 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 no. To tell you the truth, Howard, I, I, I've come to the decision that uh, well, I'd rather not travel anymore. Yeah. Not travel? Well, what'll you do? Well, remember Christmas time, when you had the party here, you'd said you'd try and think of some spot for me here in town. With us? Yeah, well, well, well sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Well, I, uh, I couldn't think of anything for you, Willie. Uh, I, I tell you, Howard, that the kids are all grown up, you know, and I don't need much anymore. If I could take home, well, $65 a week, I could swing it. You're a road man, Willie. Howard, we... I never ask a favor of any man, but, but I was with the firm when your father used to carry you here in his arms. I know that, Willie, but we well, just... Your father came to me the day you were born and asked me what I thought of the name of Howard. May he rest in peace. I appreciate that, Willie. If I had a spot, I'd slam you right in, but I just don't have a single solitary spot. Uh, Howard, all, all I need to set my table is... $50 a week. But where am I going to put your kid? Look, it isn't a question whether I can sell merchandise, is it? No, but it's a business kid, and everybody's got to pull his own weight. If I had $40 a week, then that's all I need. $40, Howard. Kid, I can't take blood from a star. Howard, the year Al Smith was nominated, your father came to me. I've got to see some people, kid. I'm talking about your father. There were promises made in this office. You mustn't tell me you got people to see. I put 34 years at this firm, Howard, and I can't pay my insurance. You can't eat the orange and throw the peel away. A man's got a piece of fruit. Willie, I gotta see some people now. Pull yourself together. Pull myself together. And stop shouting. Shouting. I've been sh I've been shouting at you, I hear. Oh, I I I I'm I'm sorry, Howard. Look, I'll go to Boston. Willie, you can't go to Boston. Why can't I go? I don't want you to represent us. I've been meaning to tell you for a long time now. Howard. Are you firing me? You're firing me. Hello, Uncle Willie. Come in. Oh, Bernard. Well, look who's here. I came to see your father. Ew, hey, what are you doing here? I just stopped by to see Pop. Get off my feet till my train leaves. I'm going to Washington in a few minutes. Uh, is he in? Yeah, he's in his office with the accountant. Yes, sit down. Dad tells me Biff's in town. Oh, yeah, yeah, Biff's in. Working on a very big deal, Bernard, with Bill Oliver. Very big sporting goods man. Called him in from the West. <laughs> you still with the old firm, Willie? I'm... I'm overjoyed to see how you made the great Bernard. Overjoyed. It's an encouraging thing to see a young man really, really. Looks very good for Biff. Biff, very. 
Bernard. What is it, Willie? What? What's the secret? Why didn't he ever catch on? I wouldn't know that, Willie. You were his friend, his boyhood friend. Just something I don't understand about him. His life ended after the Dibbets Field game. From the age of 17, nothing good ever happened to him. Willie, when he was supposed to graduate and the math teacher flunked Oh, him, that math teacher ruined his life! Willie, after he flunked, he disappeared from the block for almost a month, and I got the idea that he... Did he go up to New England to see you? Willie? Yeah, he came up to Boston, yeah. What about it? Just that when he came back, he laid down and died like a hammer hit him. What happened in Boston, Willie? Nothing. What do you mean, what happened? Well, now, don't get sore. Well, what are you trying to do, blame it on me? If a boy lays down, is that my fault? Hey, you're going to miss that train. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Goodbye, Pop. Yeah. Bye, Willie, and don't worry about it. How do you like that, kid? Going to argue a case in front of the Supreme Court? No. The Supreme Court. And he didn't even mention it. He didn't have to. He's going to do it. Charlie, uh, look, I, uh, I got my insurance to pay. If you can manage it, I need $110. Oh, I draw it from the bank, but Linda would know. And Sit I... down, Willie. I'm keeping account of everything, remember? I've got every penny back. Now, listen to me, Willie. I offered you a job. You can make $50 a week, and I won't send you on the road. I got a job. Without pay? What kind of a job is a job without pay? Why don't you want to work for me? What's the matter with you? I, I got a job. When are you going to grow up? You big ignoramus. If you say that to me again, I'll wrap you, and I don't care how big you are. How much do you need, Willie? I'm strapped, Charlie. I'm strapped. I was just fired. Howard fired you? Imagine that. I named him. I named him Howard. Willie, when are you going to realize that... You named him Howard, but you can't sell that. The only thing you got in this world is what you can sell. The funny thing is that you're a salesman and you don't know that. I've always tried to think otherwise. I've always felt that if a man was impressive and well-liked, nothing... Why must everybody like you? Who liked J.P. Morgan? Now listen, Willie. I know you don't like me. And nobody can say I'm in love with you, but I'll give you a job because... Well... What do you say? I... I just can't work for you, Charlie. What are you? Jealous of me? I can't work for you, that's all. Don't ask me why. You've been jealous of me all your life, you darn fool. Oh, here. Pay your insurance. I'll pay every penny back. I've got some work to do. Take care of yourself. And pay your insurance. Funny, you know. After all the highways and the trains and the appointments and the years, you end up worth more dead than alive. Willie. Nobody's worth nothing dead. Did you hear what I said? Willie. Charlie. You're the only friend I got. Isn't that a remarkable thing? That's all right, boy. Good luck, Willie. Yeah, in the front there, you're in the middle of all kinds of noise. That's fine, Stanley. How's this, Biff? Oh, good. Fine. Okay. When your father comes, Mr. Lawman, I'll bring him right back. Uh -huh. Oh, and Stanley, later there'll be two girls. Hmm? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, Mr. Lawman. <laughs> two girls? Yeah, a couple of babes I... And I don't look like that. It's for after dinner. Pop can go home after dinner. Oh, I don't know. I don't well, worry then... about it. Did you see Oliver? Yeah, I saw him all right. Now, look, Hap, I want to tell Dad a couple of things. I want you to help me. What? Is he going to back you? Are you crazy? Look, I waited six hours for him. See, all day, kept sending my name in. About five o'clock, he comes out. Didn't remember who I was or anything. Oh, Hap, I felt such an idiot. Well, didn't you tell him your ideas on selling? He walked away. I saw him for one minute. How did I ever get the idea I was a salesman there? I even believed myself that I'd been a salesman for him. And then he gave me one look, Hap. One look. 
And I realize we've been talking in a dream for 15 years. I was a shipping clerk. Listen, Biff, don't talk that way to Pop. Che cheer him up, string him along, but don't talk that way to oh, him. Oh, I've got to. we got to face facts. The Hello, Scout. Gee, I haven't been here in years. Want to order now? Uh, sit down. You want a, a drink? Yeah, sure. I, I don't mind. Let's get a load up. Hey, hey, you look worried. No, no, no. Scotch all around, make it doubles. Double? Double? Right. Well, what happened, boy? <laughs> everything go all right with Oliver? What's a rip? Pal, oh, I've, uh... Pal, I'm gonna tell you everything from first to last. It's... It's been a strange day. I, uh... I had to wait quite a while for him. Yeah. All day, as a matter of cold fact, and... A lot of instances, facts, Pop, facts about my life came back to me. Yeah. Who was it, Pop? Whoever said I was a salesman with Oliver? Well, you no, were... No, Dad, I was a shipping clerk. But you were practically... Dad. Dad, I don't know who said it first, but I was never a salesman for Bill Oliver. What are you talking about? Let's hold on to the facts tonight, Pop. We're not going to get anywhere bullying around. I was a shipping clerk. All right, now listen to me. Why don't you let me finish? I'm not interested in any stories about the past because I was fired today. How could you be? I was fired. And I'm looking for a little good news to tell your mother. Because the woman has waited and the woman has suffered. So don't give me a lecture about facts and aspects. I'm not interested. Now, now, what are you going to say to me, huh? He, he went up there. Yeah. yeah, I did. I saw... How could they fire you? Uh, what kind of a welcome did he give you? He won't even let you work on a commission. I'm out, so tell me. Oliver gave you a warm welcome. Sure, Pop, sure, sure. Oh, well, it, it was... Uh, I was wondering if he'd remember you. Imagine a man doesn't see him for 10, 12 years and gives him that kind of a welcome. Look, let's talk quietly and get this down to the facts, huh? Uh, what did he say? Bet you threw his arms around you. Well, well, he, he kind of... He's a fine man, very hard man to see, you know. Biff told him a lot of ideas. Now, don't interrupt. I'll be react to your ideas. Dad, will you give me a minute to explain? I've been waiting for you to explain since I sat down here. Now, now, what happened? He took you in his office and what, eh? Well, I talked and, uh, and, and he listened. Oh, he said, famous for the way he listens, you know. What was his answer? Well, his answer... Dad, you're not letting me tell you what I want to tell you. You didn't see him, now, did you? I did see him. Well, tell me what happened. Pap, I can't talk. Tell him what happened. Shut up and leave me alone. No, no, you had to go and flunk math. Flunk what? What are you talking about? Don't blame everything on me. I didn't flunk math. You did. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, I'm all washed up with Oliver. Are you spiting me? <laughs> Dad, don't take it that you way. You button little louse. Are you spiting me? You're in a restaurant. I'll cut it on both of you. Yeah, yeah, you're spiting me because of what happened in both of that I'm not expecting anybody. They're knocking on the wrong door. It must be a mistake. Oh, then tell them to go away. Okay, all right. Just stay in the bedroom here and don't come out. I, I think there's a law in Massachusetts about it, so don't come out. Maybe that new room clerk. You look kind of mean, so don't come out. It's a mistake. Will you... Biff! I've been knocking on your door a long time. Biff! Uh, what are you doing in Boston? Hey, did anything happen at home? What are you doing here in my hotel? Dad, I'll let you down. What do you mean? Dad, Biff, oh, what's all this about? Come on, let's go downstairs and I'll get your Dad, mother. I flunked math. Oh, not for the term. The term? I haven't got enough credits to graduate. You mean to say Bernard didn't, wouldn't give you the answers? He did, he tried, but, but Pop only got a 61. And they wouldn't give you four points? Burnbaum refused absolutely. I begged him, Pop, but, but he just won't give me those points. <sighs> oh, Pop, you got to talk to him before they close the school. Would you talk to him? He'd like you, Pop. And you know the way you could talk? You're on. We'll ride right back. Oh, Thanks, Dad. Well, I'm sure he'll change it for I'll you. Go downstairs and tell the clerk I'm checking out. I'll go right down. Yes, sir. Yeah. You see, the reason he hates me, Pop, is yeah, one day he went out of the clerk. Can I come in? There's something in the bathtub, Willie, and it's moving. Uh, 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 you better go back to your room. Uh, they must be finished painting by now. They're painting your room, so I'll let her take a shower. Yeah. Go back. No, go on, go back. But I gotta get dressed, Willie. I can't... Get out of here. Now, go back. Go, go back. Uh, this is Miss Frances. Biff. She, she's a buyer. They're, they're painting her room. Uh, Go back, Miss Francis. Go back. But my clothes. Get out of here. Go back. Go back. Well, where's my stockings? You promised me stockings, Willie. I have no stockings. Here. You had two boxes of size nine shears for me, and I want them. Here. Take them, Willie. Get out of here. Oh, you certainly got your nerve, Willie. Just hope there's nobody in the hall. That's all I hope. <laughs> well, we uh, better get going. I want to get to the school first thing in the morning. Now, you get my suits out of the closet, and I'll get my valise. <laughs> well, well, what's the matter? She's a liar. 
wife of J.H. Simmons. She lived down the hall. They're painting. You, you, you don't imagine. Now, now listen, pal. She, she's just a buyer. They're painting her room. Oh, now, 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 look, before, when you grow up, you'll understand about these things. You, you mustn't you must overemphasize a thing like this. I, I'll see Brenbon first thing in the morning. Never mind. Never mind. He's going to give you those points. I'll see you. He wouldn't listen to you. You certainly will listen to me. You need those points for university. I'm not going there. She, she's nothing to me, Biff. I was lonely. I was terribly, terribly oh, lonely. Dad, dad. Oh, my boy, my boy. You gave a mama stocking. I gave you an order. Don't touch me, you liar. Apologize for that. You fake. You funny little fake. You fake. I gave you an order. Biff, come back here. I'll, I'll beat you. Now come back here. I'll whip you. I gave you an order. Come back here. Come back. Come back. Well, well, it, it don't matter. You, you'll forget it. It won't mean nothing to him in, in a while. I'll bet in a while it won't mean nothing to him. No, not in the slightest. <laughs> A girl must cross many borders before she reaches world film stardom, especially if she was born in faraway Sweden and brought up in Australia like lovely Mai Zettling. Star of J. Arthur Rank's forthcoming film, Dance Little Lady, Mai has captured the hearts of film fans the world over with her bright blue eyes, sweet smile, and the smooth, creamy beauty of her complexion. Mai Zettling says, No star dare neglect her complexion. I use Lux toilet soap. This pure white soap leaves skin softer, smoother, lovelier. Nine out of every ten film stars insist on Lux Toilet Soap for their complexion care. They know it's so mild, so gentle, that its snowy whiteness is proof of a purity no other soap can match. Make pure white Lux Toilet Soap your passport to beauty. Use Lux Toilet Soap in the shower, in the bath, and for the mildest, most beautifying complexion care. Soon your skin will glow with beauty, just like the film stars. That's the promise of Lux. Now, with Frank Waters as Willie and John Millian as Biff, the Lux Radio Theatre presents the final act of Arthur Miller's drama, Death of a Salesman. Hey, 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 let's pick it up. Pick it up, Mr. Norman. Hey, hey, what's, what's the order? matter with you? Those, uh, yeah? What's the matter? Uh, where, where am I? Well, what's wrong? Yeah. You're in my place. My restaurant. And my suits and hey, hey. release. You've been talking about Boston. I Something that happened there. What's, what's, what's the matter, Mr. Norman? Well, where are they? Hmm? All the boys, uh, they left. The girls, uh, the dates came and they, they said they'd see you at home. But we were supposed to be having dinner together. Uh, can you make it home okay? Uh, sure, I, I can make it. Do, do, I, do I look all right? You look... Yeah, sure, sure. You look all right. Uh, tell me, is, is there a seed store in the neighborhood? Seeds? You mean like to, to plant? Yeah, yeah. Carrots, peas. Oh, yeah, well, uh, like there's hardware stores on 6th Avenue, but it may be too late now. Oh, I better hurry. I gotta get some seeds. I gotta get some seeds. I gotta get some seeds right away. Nothing planned. I don't have a thing in the ground. Mom, what are you doing up? Where's Pop? Is he sleeping? Where have you been? Well, we met two girls, Mom. Very fine types. Yeah, we bought you some flowers. Put them in your room, Mom. That's what I think of your flowers. <laughs> now, what did you want to throw them on the floor for? Don't you care whether he lives or dies? Uh, come upstairs, Leave Beth. me alone. What do you mean, lives or dies? Nobody's dying around here, pal. Get out of my sight. Get out of here. Fighting for dinner. He looks forward to it all day, and then you desert him there. There's no stranger you'll do that to. But Mommy had a great Shut time up. with us. Yeah, you're right, Mom. I gotta talk to the little boss. You're not going near him. Now get out of this house. No, we're gonna have an abrupt conversation, him and me. You're not talking to him. Well, I'm... Is that him outside? What's he doing out there? He's planting the garden. Now? Planting a garden this time of night? Rose, one foot rose. Uh -huh. Pop. One foot beets. 
Pop. I'm saying goodbye to you, Pop. I'm not coming back anymore. I think it's best this way, really, dear, because there's no use drawing it out. You just never get along. People ask where I am, what I'm doing. You don't know, you don't care. That way it'll be off your mind. You can start brightening up again, all right? If I strike oil, I'll send you a check. Meantime, forget I'm alive. Spike, see? Shake hands, Dad. Oh, not my hand. I was hoping not to go this way. Well, this is the way you're going. Okay. Me, you're rotten hell if you leave this house. Exactly what is it that you want from I me? I want you to know on the train, in the mountains, in the valleys, wherever you go, that you cut down your life for spite. No, no! Spite, spite is the word you're undoing. And when you're down and out, remember what did it. When you're rotten somewhere beside the railway tracks, remember. And don't you dare blame it on me. All right, phony, let's lay it on the line. Here's a rubber hose. I found it in the cellar. Hey, what, what is that? You know what it is. I, I never saw it. You that. saw it. The mice didn't bring it into the cellar. What's it supposed to do? Make a hero out of you? This is supposed to make me sorry you for you? It, There'll be no pity for you, do you hear? No pity. You hear the spite? No, man? you're going to hear the truth. What you are and what I am. Oh, stop it! You cut it now! The man don't know who we are. The man is going to know. <laughs> we never told the truth for ten minutes in this house. You know why I had no address for three months? I stole a suit in Kansas City and I was in jail. Stop <laughs> crying, I'm through with it. I suppose that's my fault. And I stole myself out of every good job since high school. But whose fault is that? And I never got anywhere because you blew me so full of hot air I could never stand taking orders from anybody. That's whose fault it is. I hear that. Oh, don't get It's me. time you heard that. I had to be boss, big shot in two weeks and I'm through with it. Hang yourself for spite. Hang yourself. Oh, no. No, no. No, nobody's hanging himself, Willie. I came out of an office building today and I stopped. Do you hear this? I stopped and I saw... I saw the sky, and I saw the things that I love in this world. The work, and the food, and the time to sit and smoke. And I said to myself, why am I trying to become what I don't want to be? What am I doing in an office making a contemptuous begging fool of myself when all I want is out there, waiting for me the minute I say I know who I am? Why can't I say that, Willie? The door of your life is wide open. Pop, I'm a dime a dozen and so are you. I am not a dime a dozen. I am Willie Loman and you are Biff Loman. I'm one dollar an hour, Willie. I tried seven states and couldn't raise it. A buck an hour. Do you gather my meaning? I'm not a leader of men, Willie, and neither are you. You were never anything but a hard-working drummer who landed in the ash can like the rest of them. I'm not bringing home any prizes anymore and you're going to stop waiting for me to bring them home. You vengeful, spiteful man. Pop, I'm nothing. I'm nothing, Pop. Can't you understand that? There's no spite in it anymore. I'm just what I have in it, that's so. <laughs> what, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> Arms around me. What, what are you doing? Why is he crying, Lindy? Will you let me go? Will you take that phony dream and burn it before something happens? I'll go in the morning. Put him to bed. Cry at me. His arms around me. Cry. Isn't that? Isn't that remarkable? Biff. He likes me. He loves you, Willie. Oh, Biff. He cried with his arms around me. My boy cried to me. That. That boy. Now that boy is gonna be magnificent. Come. To no, no, I, I, I just want to get settled down, Linda. Let me uh, sit alone for a little. <laughs> I want you with me upstairs. Yeah, in, in a few minutes, Linda. I, yeah, I, I couldn't sleep right now. Oh, go on, sweetheart. You look awful tired. I think this is the only way, will it? Yeah, the only. Sure, sure, it, it's the best thing. Everything's going to be... Go on, kid. Go to bed. Oh, I love you, sweetheart. Now go on, you, you, you go to bed now. You look so tired. Come right up. In two minutes. Oh, my boy, Biff. He loves me. Now, 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 when you kick off, boy, I want a 70-yard boot. Now get right down the field under the ball, and when you hit, hit low and hit hard, because it's important, boy. There's all kinds of important people in the stands, and the first thing you know, and the first... Th 
And the first thing you know, oh Lord, Lord, where do I, how do I? Willie, you coming now? Why didn't anybody come? It was a very nice funeral. It's almost night, Ma. I can't understand it. But this time especially. First time in 35 years we were just about free and clear. He only needed a little salary. He was even finished with the dentist. No man needs only a little salary. I can't understand it. There are a lot of nice days. When he come home from a trip or on Sundays, making the stoop, finishing the cellar, putting on a new porch. When he built the extra bathroom, put up the garage. You know something, Charlie? There's more of him in that front stoop than in all the sales he ever made. Yeah. He was a happy man with a batch of cement. He was so wonderful with his hands. He had the wrong dreams. Oh, all right. No, don't say that. He never knew who he was. Willie was a salesman. And for a salesman, there's no rock bottom to life. He don't put a bolt to a nut. He don't tell you the law or give you medicine. He's a man way out there in the blue, riding on a smile and a shoe shine. And when they start not smiling back, boy, that's an earthquake. Then you get yourself a couple of spots in your hat and you're finished. Nobody dare blame this man. A salesman's got a dream, boy. It comes with the territory. Charlie, the man never knew who he was. Why don't you come with me, Happy? I'm not licked that easily. I'm staying right in this city and I'm going to beat this racket. I'm going to show you and everybody else that Willie Loman did not die in vain. He had a good dream. It's the only dream you can have. To come out number one, man. He fought it out here and this is where I'm going to win it for him. Let's go, man. I'll be with you in a minute. Uh, go on, Charlie. I, I want to be with him for a minute. I never had a chance to say goodbye, Willie. Forgive me, dear. I can't cry. I don't understand it. I can't cry. Seems to me that you're just on an, another trip. <laughs> I keep expecting you. Willie, dear, why did you do it? I search. I search and I search. Can't understand it, Willie. I made the last payment on the house today. Today, dear. And there'll be nobody home. We're free and we're clear. We're free. <laughs> so ends our play, Death of a Salesman. In a moment, our producer-director, Mr. Paul Jacklin, comes to the microphone to list our cast and give you details of next week's production. You see yourself in the mirror every day. That's why you don't notice when you begin to look old. But others do. So, remember this. The dingy, unpleasant film that gathers on your teeth after every meal makes them lose their whiteness long before their time. Adds years to your appearance. You can remove dulling film with Pepsodent. Pepsodent is the only toothpaste that removes dingy film completely for only Pepsodent contains irium, the wonder cleansing ingredient. 
Just one tube of Pepsodent will make your teeth whiter, younger looking. And whiter, young looking teeth are the secret of a youthful appearance. You'll like the cool peppermint flavour of Pepsodent. Everyone likes it. Make Pepsodent your family toothpaste. Buy the big economy size Pepsodent and save up to one and eight pence every time. Very soon, the winner of the Lux Hollywood Award will be announced. At the beginning of our broadcast year, our sponsors instituted this award for the actor or actress giving the most outstanding performance in the productions. And now, recordings of the six finalists have been sent to Hollywood, and very soon, the winner will be flying across the Pacific by Pan American World Airways to appear on the American Lux Theatre. And now, here is Mr. Paul Jacklin. Thank you, Bob Pollard. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. In our production of Death of a Salesman, you heard the following players. as Miss Francis, Yvonne Lewis, as Stanley, Ben Gabriel. Bernard was played by David Netheim, Charlie by Kevin Brennan, Howard by Kenneth Warren. The role of Linda was played by Neva Cargrin, that of Happy by John Ewart. And as Biff and Willie Lohman, you heard our stars, John Mellon and Frank Waters. Ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday evening, the Lux Radio Theatre brings you Edward, My Son, a play by two of the brightest names in the entertainment world, Robert Morley and Noel Langley. So join us for Edward, My Son, with our star, the noted English actor Alexander Archdale, on the Lux Radio Theatre, one week from tonight. This is the Lux Radio Theatre signing off from 50 stations throughout the Commonwealth of Australia.